Hello, welcome to Rando Tech Info. In our knockdown drag out battle between Samsung and Apple's latest and greatest flagships to see which one actually takes better video. Because all flagship smartphones can take pretty good photos these days, but video can still be a bit tricky. And for years now, the vast majority of tech influencers and reviewers have been handing this win to Apple, sometimes seemingly without a whole lot of testing, often overlooking some of the best features from other smartphones' videography toolkits. So to challenge Apple's reigning flagship iPhone 15 Pro Max, we will be using Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra to see which one actually gives you the best video recording footage and experience. And because I respect your time, I'm not going to spend any time talking about specs and just look at a variety of real world results. I have also included timestamps so you can skip to the parts of the video that are of greatest interest to you. I am also going to try to keep most of the clips short and my comments brief. That's much appreciated. So if you want a closer or longer look at any specific footage, feel free to rewind and zoom. However, if you do this, I also recommend you make sure you play back the footage in the highest possible resolution your device supports. All right, enough talk. Let's get into it. So starting out with some basic 4K 30 frames per second footage, using the point and shoot modes on both phones, we see there's actually very little difference between these shots. To the point that I can honestly say for me personally, if you swapped out the shots, I probably wouldn't even notice. This is also the case in recording at 60 frames per second with the footage really looking no different than the 30 frames per second footage. So unless you're planning on capturing a very fast moving subject or slowing down your footage in post, I would save your storage space and stick with 30 frames per second. And the same pretty much goes for 8K on the S24 Ultra. Yes, it can shoot in 8K 30 frames per second, which some say is an advantage over the iPhone, which caps out at 4K, and yes, it does produce sharper footage when zoomed in. But unless you need to crop into the shot, it really looks no better, especially since most people still don't even own any devices that can take advantage of 8K. Moving over to the ultra-wides, we see the iPhone does have a slightly wider field of view, while the Samsung looks a bit more contrasty. Switching to 3 times zoom, we see a slightly brighter and more vibrant shot on the Samsung. We also see slightly better resolution, which isn't surprising since the Samsung has a dedicated 3 times sensor while the iPhone has to crop in with its main sensor. However, you have to zoom in and pixel peep to really notice this, so I'm not sure how much this actually even matters. At 5X, both were able to use their 5X sensors and both look pretty good, with the iPhone showing a little more contrast and the Samsung being a bit more exposed, as evident with the details in the wheels. At 10 times using the 5X sensor, the S24 has a little more detail, but its colors seem a bit muted when compared to the iPhone. And in this shot, we are starting at 10x and zooming into 15x. Here we see the Samsung footage is slightly more exposed, but I don't think that necessarily means it looks better. One advantage the S24 does have here is it can continue to zoom up to 20x while the iPhone caps out at 15. When transitioning between the lenses, neither phone is great or terrible. Neither is particularly jarring, but I wouldn't exactly call the transition smooth either. Now, while all the footage up to this point had been filmed with HDR off, I wanted to see what both phones could do with HDR turned on, and the results were... unimpressive. I really couldn't tell much difference with the Samsung, as the footage almost looked exactly the same as with HDR turned off. And to my eye, the iPhone's footage just looked worse. So for both phones, unless you have a very compelling reason to do otherwise, I would just leave the feature turned off. Good to know. Testing the focus speeds on both phones, the Samsung with its laser autofocus sensor is actually able to hang pretty well with the iPhone's LiDAR sensor. And both phones do a very nice job of snapping the subject into focus. The audio capture on both phones is also pretty good. This is what audio sounds like in a quiet place on the S24 Ultra. And this is what audio sounds like in a quiet place on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So while we're doing the cinematic video and portrait video test of both these phones, we're going to go ahead and do the audio test as well. Which one do you think sounds better? Let me know down in the comments. So up to this point in well-lit conditions, most shots in most situations were similar. Like, really similar. Both phones proved to have good autofocus and both delivered pretty good audio. However, there were a few differences in specific areas. The iPhone's ultra-wide does have a slightly wider field of view and the S24 can zoom in a little farther. The S24 does pull in a little bit more detail at certain zoom ranges, but you have to pixel peep to see it. And it's a similar story with 8K on the S24 Ultra. Yes, it does have 8K and the iPhone doesn't, but unless you plan to zoom in in post, you really aren't going to notice. So while I think it's safe to say both of these phones take high quality video in almost all daytime situations, I do think you have to give a very slight edge to the S24 here because of the slightly better zoom quality and the 8K. But make no mistake, these advantages will not matter to most people and I think the vast majority of people will be happy with the video quality from either phone. 
which is nice. <laughs> so now let's look at some low light footage. This tricky footage was shot in very low light with a very small light source behind the subject. And while the iPhone's footage is brighter, it's such a mess, I still give the win to the Samsung. In this low light footage, the S24's footage looks better and is more visible. In this shot, the Samsung's footage is brighter and the iPhone's shot looks more natural, but both are pretty similar. Here, the S24's footage is brighter than the Pro Max in some areas, but darker in others, where the iPhone just kind of seems to smooth it all out. This was once again a very dark scene, so I feel both phones did pretty well. However, in this situation, you can see the iPhone does a way better job of balancing the exposure, with the Samsung completely blowing out the light. And it's a similar result here, although this time you see the infamous halo effect or dancing lights in the iPhone shot, so neither is perfect. Here we have another similar situation, but this time the light is in the background, and here I think the S24 does a little better, at least when zoomed in. Here the S24 is brighter, but once again the Pro Max is better at managing the exposure across all focal lengths, and I think produces a much better overall result. And you get the same result here until you reach 10x zoom, where the S24 is finally able to nail the sign. However, the Samsung does have a feature in its bag of camera tricks to help out with this disadvantage, a built-in video pro mode. And using this mode to adjust things like exposure and ISO, you can definitely improve the shot, although I was never able to get it to quite match the iPhone's footage. And we will do a deeper dive on pro video options on both phones later in this video. I can hardly wait! So in straight up low light conditions, the S24 is a little better at producing a little brighter and sometimes cleaner shots. But in those more tricky situations with both light and dark areas, the iPhone is significantly better. It's almost as if the iPhone treats the light like butter and spreads it out evenly across the scene, and it does this very well. You can make some manual adjustments with the S24 to help close the gap a bit, and it does help. But overall, even though it is a bit situational, I think you have to give low light videography to the iPhone. I'll be down. So up to this point, we have been giving all of our love to the rear-facing cameras, but what about the front-facing shooters? Well, you were in luck, my vlogging friends, because that is what's coming up next. It's about damn time. In low light, the S24 looks brighter and the iPhone looks more natural, but both are similar. And when taking a walk in a sunny, harsh lighting situation, both phones are steady, but the Samsung's footage is overexposed. Although both phones can shoot in 4K 60 frames per second with their front cameras, if that kind of thing matters to you. It doesn't. Next, we need to talk about special modes. You know, the modes that most reviewers bang on and on about that most people never use. Sounds about right. So if terms like super steady, slow motion, pro video, and pro res don't matter to you, you can feel free to skip this part. And let's start out with what might be the least used of all camera modes, macro mode. However, if you are one of the people who use it, you will be happy to know both phones can get crazy close to their subject and both can get the job done with similar, if not equal, results. Both phones also do a pretty good job with slow motion capture, with both phones being able to record in 1080 at 120 and 240 frames a second. However, the Samsung can also record in 4K 120, so it takes the win here. Both phones offer up time-lapse modes, and once again, the footage from both is similar. But also, once again, the Samsung offers up more versatility by giving you additional resolution and speed options. Both phones offer up their own versions of super steady modes, and they both work great. But honestly, you are probably never going to have to use them because even when I was running around with the modes turned off, both phones still delivered super steady footage. Both phones have their own versions of portrait video mode, known as cinematic mode, on the iPhone. And once again, while the S24 gives you some extra versatility by allowing you to adjust your level of background blur and has some cool extra modes like black and white and glitch, the iPhone's footage just looks a lot more natural, so I don't think there is a clear winner here. Next, we're going to take a look at a few modes on the S24 that the iPhone doesn't have. The first is single take, which allows you to record 10 seconds of footage and then let the phone create some clips and photos from that footage. It's kind of like a highlight reel. When this mode came out a few years ago, I thought it was pretty neat, and I guess it still is, but if I'm being honest, outside of making reviews like this one, I probably haven't used this mode since around 2021. Ouch! The S24 also has a dual record mode, which lets you record with both the front and rear facing cameras simultaneously. And this one I actually do use on occasion, usually on days I'm at the track. Oh, now you missed oh. Finally, the last exclusive feature on the Samsung is a built-in Pro Video mode. We touched on this briefly earlier, but this is actually a nice feature to have. It not only lets you make manual adjustments to focus, ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and exposure, but it also gives you some extra FPS options as well, allowing you to go all the way from 24 frames all the way up to 120 frames per second while shooting in 4K. And while this may not be super useful for everyone, as someone who slows down a lot of footage in post, the higher frame rate is actually really nice. 
This is a pretty nice advantage Samsung's phones have had over the iPhone for a while now. However, the field has been leveled a bit recently. It used to be to get pro video options on an iPhone, you had to pay for them by going out and getting a third-party app like Filmic Pro. However, a few months back, the Blackmagic camera app was released in the Apple App Store and changed all that. And even more recently, the Final Cut camera app was released and both apps offer up a nice selection of manual controls. And just for the record, the Blackmagic app is now available on recent Samsung and Pixel devices as well. And while it's always preferable to have manual controls built into your phone's native camera app, it's pretty cool there are some good free first and third-party options now available on the iPhone. Agreed. Up until now, it seemed like Samsung has had most of the advantages when it comes to special modes and exclusive features, but the iPhone has a couple of tricks up its sleeves as well, and those tricks are ProRes and Log. While some hardcore videographers love ProRes for its detail and ability to capture a truck ton of information, its file sizes are gigantic when compared to normal 4K video. And honestly, on most screens and in most situations, the difference really isn't that noticeable. And the same goes for Log, which is really only useful if you want to do your own color grading in post production. Oh, and before I forget, the iPhone can also record spatial video, which can be useful if you are one of the two or three dozen people who bought and are still using the Apple Vision Pro. Burn. So like I said, these features really are for the hardcore. I mean, I'm a YouTuber with over 28,000 subscribers and I don't even use this stuff. And for the record, the S24 can also record higher bitrate videos and in HDR10+, but also, once again, very few people are going to see any noticeable benefit from these features. Finally, to wrap things up, we need to talk about some other miscellaneous features that can impact your videography quality of life. In the file formatting department, both phones can capture video in HEVC and H.264 formats. Both phones have excellent screens, but the S24's does get a little brighter and it has an anti-reflective coating which does make it easier to see outdoors on sunny days. And the Samsung definitely has the superior user interface. Not only does it have the previously mentioned built-in Pro modes, on the iPhone in order to change some of the camera settings, you actually have to leave the camera app and go into the phone settings to do it. That's ridiculous. So at the end of the day, which one of these phones is going to give you the best overall video shooting experience? Obviously, this will somewhat come down to the features and benefits that are most important to you. But for me, if I can only stick with one of these phones, I would stick with Samsung and the S24 Ultra. Gasp. You have to remember, I don't use dedicated cameras to film these videos, I use my phones, which gives me a different perspective to a lot of other YouTubers and reviewers, and the Ultra just has too many features I don't want to live without. Like being able to film at 120 frames per second in 4K, having easier access to the settings and built-in pro modes, and having a brighter and less reflective screen. The iPhone's biggest advantages, like being able to shoot in ProRes and its superior overall low light videography, are simply things that don't matter a lot to me. However, with the arrival of the Blackmagic and Final Cut apps, the iPhone has become a lot more useful to me recently. And since I'm lucky enough to have both phones, I will continue to make content with both phones. Lucky you. Well, that's all the information I have for one day, and if you made it to the end of this video, thank you. And if you actually watched the whole video, please feel free to weigh in down in the comments as to which phone you think provides the best video capture experience. That way we can all continue to learn from each other and make more informed buying decisions. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.